Aramis and welcome to Edge CGI. So here I have just imported a tongue that I created in 3ds Max. I want to use ZBrush as much as possible for this series of tutorials but sometimes it's a lot easier just to create something with polygons and import it, export it into ZBrush. And because we're using Dynamesh it incorporates into the scoped with no hassle. So here I'm using the clay build up brush to define the wrinkles on the neck of the T-Rex. The T-Rex, along with a lot of other dinosaurs and animals, has a very wrinkly neck. And here I'm using the standard brush to define the edges of the jaw along with the H-Polish brush or flatten brush to flatten out the mouth area. And here I'm defining the nostrils of the T-Rex. So as you can see I'm moving around a lot because I don't like to stay in one area for too long. And you never want to adjust to one view. You want to always move, always be looking around, always be adjusting the the width, the height, the length of things to match your reference image and to match the effect you're going for. So the purpose of this ser series of tutorials is to create kind of a, a video game dinosaur. So if you show this dinosaur to like a paleontologist, they might tell you that it's inaccurate. However, because we're creating it for a game, we want to sometimes defy realism so we can have a more intimidating creature. And here I just masked off that area, and now it's much easier to use the move brush because I noticed that the dinosaur's head wasn't tall enough. And now it matches the reference images a lot better. So now I'm starting to work on the eye area a little bit. I think it's time to work on the eyes. Defining the ridges around the eyes, the brows. So to clarify what I said in the previous video, when I was talking about the mass of the legs, when we animate something in 3D, we're just moving around vertices and polygons. We're not actually moving something that has weight and mass to it. That's why it's especially important for us to give it the illusion of having strength and mass and weight and volume. We want to give it the illusion that it's a real breathing creature and there's muscle and fat and tissue underneath its skin. And it takes me a little bit to get the eye area right, but it's all about persistence and small refinements over time. Do not be disappointed if your scope does not look exactly the way you want it to. If it does not match your reference image, your concept, or your photograph. That's the, if you're new to sculpting, this is the biggest hurdle that you have to get over. You can't simply give up as soon as as it doesn't look right. As otherwise you'll never get anywhere. And even we professional artists have to go through this phase where we're just not satisfied with the way it looks. And the only way to get past that is to put in more time into it, make more refinements, large adjustments, small adjustments, just keep adjusting and refining until your scope starts to look like what you would like. And that's why in, in any sculpting video you see, they will constantly be using the move brush to move things around. Here I'm using the standard brush to define the wrinkles around the body. Just taking a break from the head and working on the wrinkles around the legs, for example. Remember that lizards, reptiles, hold a lot of their fat in their tails. So you're going to get a lot of large wrinkles there, especially on the bottom. and different areas of the dinosaur will have different details. For example, there will be more scales on the top as opposed to the bottom. Here I'm defining the calf area, once again focusing on those muscle fibers. So depending on what you're sculpting, you can feel free or not free to take artistic liberties. 
and if you're creating a video game creature you should take some liberties with it because you want it to be more intimidating more frightening to the player so you can make things look bulkier sharper larger thicker because that creates more of the intimidation factor whereas a realistic depiction of a T-Rex would still be frightening but maybe not as frightening and you can even put in features that would not exist on a real dinosaur like different spikes different claws here I'm defining the foot area so one thing I should mention is that I will not be putting in any claws in this video I will be introducing a nice tool called IMM insert multi mesh in the fourth video and I'll be using that to create mechanical a mechanical leg and that tool is also great for inserting claws so I'll be saving that for the fourth video in case you're wondering I'll be using insert multi mesh for the mechanical parts as well as the claws and the teeth as well he's not going to have any teeth yet because it's much easier to use that tool to create teeth and claws to insert them so I'll save it for the fourth video here I am just defining the form of his toes because it has se several sections to it and once again you want to make it thick enough to hold the claws And one tricky thing about sculpting these ancient prehistoric creatures is that all the references that you find, they will all be different. So try searching, for example, for T-Rex on an image search. And look at every image and notice all the things that are different in each image. Depending on what you find, you will, you will have a a different interpretation of the T-Rex because remember everything that we know about the T-Rex is interpreted from bones we don't actually know what they look like everything you see is an artist's rendering an artist's depiction of what they might have looked like using all the evidence that we currently have and that's why everything you'll find whether it's in the, on the internet or in a textbook it will have a different interpretation of it a different depiction so I use the combination of scientific images and video game images or you know, more artistic liberties taken with it so it all depends on what kind of reference you use and what sort of look you're going for. So if you find that this T-Rex is not to your liking, if you think he doesn't look intimidating enough, or you think he doesn't look realistic enough, feel free to add your own interpretation to it and to mod modify him however you see fit. but an important thing is to stay consistent so here I'm inserting a lot more wrinkles on his stomach close to the tail area and I'm just using the standard brush to quickly fill in those wrinkles and sometimes wrinkles will crisscross this is a, an effect that happens so that's fine and here I'm just focusing a little bit more on the arms just bending them and making sure that the fingers are the same length and here I'm just using the clay builder brush to insert those little holes so we can insert the claws in video number four using insert multi mesh the clay builder brush is very good at replicating muscle fibers it's pretty much the best brush to create that illusion of muscle fibers 
and this is uh, this is another area that will change depending on what reference you're using there's different artistic renderings of what the shoulder area look like one important thing that to keep in mind is that a lot of animals and creatures have similar anatomies so if you want to look at what this area looks like if you want to have a more realistic interpretation you can even try looking at human musculature and the way human shoulders and the chest area and the clavicles look and you can try to in incorporate that into a fictional creature or a creature that existed long ago you can tr also try looking at modern reptiles and seeing how their anatomy flows here I am defining the brows they have a very unique uh, a very unique brow area here I'm in I went into append and I appended a sphere and now I'm using the transpose tool to scale it down that's going to be his eye however for this I honestly use a different program because I find it much easier to insert a sphere exactly where I want it to be and here I am defining the area around the eye so notice how much I'm, a I'm doing with this low amount of geometry there are a lot of different sculpting styles out there some people will tell you to do as much as possible in every single subdivision level before moving on and other people will just go ahead and subdivide two or three or four times and start working with greater density and that's also a valid sculpting style for this I'm trying to do as much as possible with every single subdivision level and here I'm showing you exactly what the density is it's still relatively dense it's still relatively lacking density you can tell because you can see all the faces all the polygons and it's looking very rough right now here I'm masking off the ridge area because I find it's a lot easier to sculpt this when the area is masked off and I'm not worried about other areas and now I'm just using the standard brush to create those ridges to create those indentations it's very useful to mask that area off here I'm just using clay buildup to create some of these different shapes around his mouth and further defi defining his nostrils so it's important to always be moving around don't stay in one area for too long and don't get used to one viewport for too long and of course define define your areas using Damien standard the standard brush slash tree brush define the wrinkles and the deeper areas here what I'm doing is masking this area off and using the inflate brush because that's a good way to build up the mass he's got a very very wrinkly neck so if you masked off areas you can inflate them and get a good result here I'm changing the material because sometimes it's a good idea to change the material around it can give you a fresh outlook and it can be very refreshing to change your at least the color of your material I'm still using the matte cap gray but I'm just changing the t the hue so as you can see he's not very dense right now try and do as much as possible with as little as possible before subdividing I haven't really subdivided yet I'm still working at the basic level adding those wrinkles and now time to work on the tongue a little bit the tongue kind of curves inward what I'm doing now is I'm masking off the tongue area because I want to isolate it I want to be able to quickly 
isolate the tongue area. So once I've selected this, you can go under Polygroup, Group Masked, and that will create a separate a separate polygroup for the masked area, which in this case is the tongue. So I can work on just the tongue and the inside of the mouth. And it's much easier to work on the tongue and the inside when you, everything else is hidden. The mouth area of a creature or a human can be a very difficult area to work with because the surrounding geometry will block it, but just create a separate polygroup for it and it'll be much easier to work with. Here I'm going back to work on the arms. It's an area that I've been ignoring, but now it's time to do some work on it now that we have enough subdivision, enough density. And just defining the shoulders, creating wrinkles, creating folds. Because remember that the longer a creature lives, its skin will start to fold over itself and sag a little bit. And also it depends on the amount of fat that the creature has. And that's one more thing to notice, one more thing to think about, is the creature's life conditions. Is it starving? If you're creating some kind of sci-fi game or movie, you should think about the conditions of the planet that your creatures live on. If there is a lot of food, your creatures will probably be thicker, fatter, and probably have more wrinkles to them. Or perhaps less wrinkles, depending on what kind of food, what kind of nutrition they get. Are they full, or are they constantly starving? And these are some things to think about because they can affect how your creature will end up. The, the arms can be difficult to sculpt because, once again, every reference image that you find of a T-Rex will usually focus on its jaw. And it's much harder to find reference images of their hands and the parts that are not very, aren't as popular. Because these creatures are very steeped in popular fiction. So people will usually, when you think of a T-Rex, you usually think of its, its head, its jaw, maybe its massive legs. But so it's harder to find good reference images of its arms. So here I am defining they have very distinctive hands with near the claws it's very thick there almost like a palm but now that I'm done with that or got a little bit more progress I can focus a little bit more on the tail and add more wrinkles there and the wrinkles will intersect with the wrinkles near the legs and it's still not too late it's still not too late to use the move brush so you can still define its shape even at this stage and I find that the standard brush is very comfortable to create wrinkles a lot wrinkles that are a lot fatter a lot thicker for very small fine wrinkles you want to go ahead and use the Damien standard brush and I'm just going over it again and again and again to create, to break up the simplicity break up the smoothness and give him the illusion of having lived for a long time and accumulated many wrinkles and back to work on the head area you want to put a lot more attention on the head because that's where people will be looking more. Here I have subdivided the T-Rex one time and now I have more geometry 
to further define the wrinkles around the eyes. They have a lot of wrinkles around their eyes. And I'm also refining the shape of the eyelids and make sure that they fit around the eye carefully so they don't hang out too much, so they're not too far in. And I'm defining the ridges around the eye. And as you can see, he's really starting to come together now. Now that we have defined the area around the eye, he's starting to look a lot better. He's starting to look a lot more like a higher quality sculpt, just because of a few simple changes. So this is the part where you're really starting to focus more on the details and smaller refinements. We've got the shape of his head. The shape of the head is satisfactory and we can still we can still tweak it here and there. We can still change it. But now we can start focusing on smaller wrinkles and details. And you really want to break up any obvious patterns and also smooth some areas out. If something didn't turn out the way you like, you uh, don't be afraid just to smooth it out and try again. So in, th in this case, I just smooth the area out and I can come back to it later. And I'm creating these kinds of details here. I'm using the standard brush to define the edges of his jaw some more. Further, the, the further defining the jaw here. As you can see, this area on the bottom of his lower mouth is relatively smooth because that's an area that I neglected. So now it's time to do some work on it. And just further, it's really fun creating wrinkles. You want it to be a very kind of fast process. You don't want to take a long time to create every single wrinkle. You want to do it very quickly and have a, have a good time doing it. Because if you enjoy what you're doing, I think you'll get a better result. Also the inside of his mouth is very smooth and we should fix that and a lot of quick wrinkles. You can work in st in phases. Your first stage, can, first phase, can be very rough, and just creating a bunch of wrinkles, a bunch of detail. Then you can smooth it out and start on the next phase, where you're a little bit slower, a little bit more careful. And it's also his uh, his lip area is also flatter there. Here I'm using the previous poly group to quickly hold control shift and click on the tongue to isolate it. Here I am once again masking off this area so I can work on it and not affect anything else. Invert the mask. Now I'm using the standard brush except I change the stroke type to drag rectangle and I'm using a simple alpha to add alpha to add smaller detail on the jaw area on his lip area and here I'm using a different alpha to add scales alpha should be the last stage close to the last stage that's when you're adding lots of small details that would take a really long time to sculpt manually or just scoped individually. Here's another great alpha. It's these very nice wrinkles that you can use in a variety of ways in a variety of creatures. And when you when you isolate areas, your perfor performance is a lot better, so you get a much better result. When you're working on a very dense piece of geometry, your performance can slow down, so isolating different areas will increase your performance. And now I'm just creating some last minute detail, some scales on the top of his body, 
lizards and this T-Rex in particular, they have a lot more scales on the top of their body and the bottom is a lot more wrinklier. And you can also smooth the edges of your details to have a much better transition. Thank you for watching Edge CGI. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with future videos. Thank mm -hmm. you.